So this is Algebra 2 with Trig. We're going to work on the coordinates today. So we're using a sheet of paper. Um, you can use a note card. You can use many different items. So what we're going to do is place ours right along the x-axis. You want to place yours along the x-axis and you can barely see where the 30 degree dot is along the circumference of the circle. When you do that, you're going to mark where the 30 degree goes and you're going to mark where the origin would be. Then you can use a straight edge. To connect those, you can use an ID card, a ruler, edge of a book. You can just use your eyes, whatever works for you. Then you can cut your triangle out. You can fold your paper a few times and rip it carefully. You can cut it right along that line. So here we have created a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So we're going to label this vertex or this angle 30 degrees. We know that it is straight up to get to our coordinates, so that makes this 90 degrees. And mathematically, that makes this a 60 degree angle. This would be a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So it's going to be able to use all the rules that we know about a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So let's talk about the 30, 60, 90 rules. If we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, we know that the short leg, whatever the short leg is, is going to be half the measurement of the hypotenuse. And whatever the short leg is, the long leg will be root 3 times the short leg. So there's two formulas we use. Hypotenuse equals the short leg times 2 and the long leg equals the short leg times root 3. Well, in our situation, the hypotenuse is a value of 1, because this is a unit circle. Our triangle, I showed you in a previous lesson, the unit circle is having your center point at the origin, and the circle is coming around with a radius of 1. So it's actually a very small triangle, but we just zoom in. We zoom in so it's really this large, but we still have the x value being 1 and the x value being negative 1 over here the y value being 1 and the y value being negative 1. So we're just zoomed in. So that means if this is a circle with a radius of 1, the hypotenuse is 1. So we can put a 1 right there on the hypotenuse. I'm going to draw our right triangle again. So we have a 30, 60, 90 with a hypotenuse of 1. That's true about the unit circle. So if the hypotenuse equals the short leg times 2, we know the hypotenuse is 1. 
how do we calculate what the short leg is? We have to divide both sides by two, or times it by a half. So the short leg is going to be a half. So let's go ahead and write that on our paper. We'll write short, just to remind ourselves that that's clearly the short side. And this is one divided by two, one half. Now, for us to calculate what the long side is, the long side is the short side times root 3. That comes from our rules learned in geometry of a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So the long side is going to equal the short side, which is a half, times root 3. How do we multiply root 3 times a half? How do you multiply a fraction times not having a fraction? Don't want to call it a whole number because it's not a whole number, but a fraction times a radical. Some people think about putting a 1 over the value and you multiply the tops and you multiply the bottoms. So the long leg is going to be root 3 over 2. Root 3 over 2. So we can write long and root 3 over 2. Let's talk about that for a second. Both of these numbers, the half and the root 3 over 2, which number is bigger? We know the square root of 1 is 1. So you can consider this the square root of 1, and that's the square root of 3. Which number is going to be bigger, the square root of 1 or the square root of 3? Clearly, the square root of 3 is bigger than the square root of 1. That's how numbers work. In terms of a calculator, square root of 3 is going to be bigger than the square root of 1, because the square root of 1 is 1. So which fraction is bigger? Root 3 over 2, half of a bigger number is going to be larger than half of a smaller number. So root 3 over 2 is always going to be bigger than a half. So when we start to talk about our coordinates, we have an x value to get underneath our coordinate, and we have a y value to get to our coordinate. So the x value is long, and the y coordinate is short. Long way over, short way up. The long number will always be root 3 over 2, and the short number will always be a half. So that's when we're looking at a 30 degree angle. So 30 is down here. Notice the 90 degrees is on the x-axis. It's going to stay on the x-axis. So you're going to flip your triangle now because you want the 60 degree angle to be at the origin so you can reach up to the coordinate that we're looking for. Let's label this triangle. We know we have a 90 degree angle that is standing on the x-axis. We have a 60 degree angle. 30 degree angle because it has to add up to 180. This here is the short side and this here would be considered the long or it's the long leg. And of course the hypotenuse is still 1. So what's your coordinate at this location? 
How much over are we going? Half. That's your x. How much upper are we going? So it's short, long. The short way over is a half, and the long way up is root 3 over 2. So if you re just remember short, long, because it's a short way to get underneath the 60 and a long way to get up to the 60, then you already know your coordinates and you don't have to memorize that they are 1 half and root 3 over 2. You just need to know short means a half and long is root 3 over 2. Now we're going to come over here to 120. How do we position our triangle so we can see how it does that? You always put your x value on the x-axis. You always put your 90 degrees standing on the x-axis. You never put the 90 degrees at the origin. Never at the origin. So what's our coordinate going to be here now? What type of a half? It's going to be negative because it's to the left of the y-axis, and then it's up, which is root 3 over 2. And you did it. Again, that's short, long. So to get to 120, which is way up high near the 90, that's going to be a short distance and a long distance to get there. So as you're trying to memorize this and visualize a unit circle, you're going to visualize this 120 is really high, so that's going to take a short distance over and a long distance up. Let's reposition our triangle so it's sitting on the x-axis. The 90 degrees is not at the origin, never at the origin. What's our coordinate going to be? So this is 150, so we know we have to come a long way over. So the long number is root 3 over 2, and it's negative because it's to the left. And it's a short distance up because 150 is the closest one to 180, so it doesn't have to go up very high. So that's going to be a half. Now we have our 3060, 120, and 150 coordinates taken care of. Notice that the 60 and okay, the 60 and the 120 are in the same order. Some people memorize that. They memorize just quadrant 1 and in a reflection, you'll see that these are going to stay in the same order. The 30s from the x-axis these are just reflected across, and it's reflected to the left, so your sign is going to be negative. Different ways for you to remember the coordinates. So we're going to do 210 now. 210 is going to hang down off the x-axis. The 90 is not at the origin. We're 30 degrees from the x-axis. So what is our coordinate going to be? You're thinking 210. You're thinking that's way out there near the 180, essentially, compared to some of these other numbers. It's far over. So it's long and short. Long to the left and a short way down. So now we're going to reposition our triangle so it is hanging off the x-axis. The 90 degrees is on the x-axis. So you're visualizing how far over do you have to go, how far down do you have to go. To get to 240, you're going to have to go a short way over and a long way down. 
So a short <coughs> way over, you know, is a half. And because it's to the left, it's going to be negative. And it's long, so it's going to be negative root 3 over 2. We can reposition our triangle into the next quadrant. You're going to hang it off the x-axis. The 90 is not at the origin. That's the common mistake. You have a short way and a long way. That's what you're trying to memorize. Do you see the triangle? You have short, long to get down here. So short is always a half. And because it's to the right, it's positive. Negative, because it's down, the long way. Negative root 3 over 2. Reposition your triangle. Hang it on the x-axis. You have a long short. Long is to the right, so it's positive. Short is down, so it's negative. And we have now listed all the 30, 60, 90 triangles around the unit circle. <coughs> so the other spot you may see that's missing is up here at this pi over 4, 45 degrees. So you're going to take one of your right angles, set it on the x-axis, Slide it over to the edge of your circle so you can barely see the dot. You're going to mark where that 45 degree is located. And you're going to mark where the origin is. Now you can bring your straight edge over, and you can connect the two. And you cut it out. You know, this is a 45 degree angle. This is going to be 90 because it's straight over and straight up. They're perpendicular sides. You know that this coordinate, or actually this angle, is going to be 45 also. You can flip the triangle over and do the 90, 45, 45 if you like. Now, what do we know about this 45, 45, 90 triangle? We know that both legs are going to be the same for each other. This is an isosceles triangle, so both legs are going to be the same. We know the hypotenuse is a value of 1. Well, in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, we have a relationship that happens. The legs are the same, and the hypotenuse is root 2 times each leg. So we have the formula hypotenuse equals leg times root 2. So if we know the hypotenuse is 1, the leg, we're going to calculate the length of the leg by dividing by root 2. That's 1 divided by root 2 
unfortunately, we can't leave it in that format. We have to rationalize the denominator. Good terminology. So we're getting both of the legs to be root 2 over 2. We don't have to do the calculations twice. It's the same <coughs> length for each leg. So our legs are root 2 over 2, which makes sense. This is an isosceles triangle. Two sides are the same. So on your triangle, you're going to want to write root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. You can flip it over and do the same thing. <coughs> so now we're going to align this. We're going to sit it right on the x-axis, slide it over so it lines up perfectly with your pi over 4, or otherwise known as 45 degrees. So what is this coordinate going to be? How far to the right do we have to go and how far up do we have to go to get to this coordinate? Root 2 over 2. Root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. Well, we said that 1 over 2 was the short and root 3 over 2 was the long. Root 2 over 2 falls in between. So we have short, we have long, and then we have the two values that are the same. Some people look at the pattern. You could call it square root of 1, square root of 2, square root of 3. Then you say square root of 1, square root of 2, square root of 3. There's a pattern. 3, 2, um, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, however you want to think about it. But learning them in those patterns doesn't help a ton when you're thinking about individual angles. So it really helps for you to remember it's a short way over and a long way up. Or there are two equal distances, so you know they're root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. So let's take our triangle and flip it. Align this over at 135 degrees. Remember, you set your triangle on the x-axis. You have a 90 degree angle, not at the origin. So what's your coordinate going to be? And a negative X and a positive Y. So we can do the same thing. Down at 225. It's going to be to the left, so negative root 2 over 2. And it's down, so it's negative root 2 over 2. Notice that all the coordinates in the third quadrant are negative. All the coordinates in the second quadrant have negative x's and positive y's. So we'll take our 45, 45, 90 triangle, reflect it across. Notice that it's hanging off the x-axis. 90 degrees is not at the origin. We're going over and down, equal distances. So root 2 over 2 and negative root 2 over 2. And we've done it. We have listed out all the coordinates, at least all those complicated coordinates, along our unit circle. And we did it using a 45-45-90 triangle and a 30-60-90 triangle. So we have a few more coordinates to get of these quadrantal angles. 
So if this is the unit circle, that tells us that the radius is 1. So what is the coordinate at 0 degrees? 0 for the y, but it's going to be 1 for the x. So from your origin, you're 1 unit to the right, and you're up and down 0. What's it going to be at pi over 2? 0 right and left, and 1 up. The circle has a radius of 1, so the distance from the origin up is going to be 1. Our coordinate at pi... It's going to have an x value, which is to the left, an x value of negative 1, and a y value of 0, which is up and down. So negative 1, 0. And the last one, one a lot of people <coughs> write down too quick and mess up. It's right and left, 0, but it's 1 down for the y. 0 is for the x's. And negative 1 is for the y's. So when we talk about each of these triangles, let's go back to our 30, 60, 90 triangle. As we have our 30, 60, 90 triangle, we have from the 30 degrees, we have this opposite side, we have the hypotenuse, and we have our long side. This opposite side, if this is a 30 degree angle, this opposite side is the y value. The long side is the x value of the coordinate. And the hypotenuse is always 1. So if we're looking for the sine of 30 degrees, we're talking about the y value over the hypotenuse, which is 1. So we get sine of 30 is what y equals. In other words, the y portion of the coordinate is always sine. When we talk about the x value, that's the adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent at 30 is, or really any angle, it doesn't matter that this is 30, it's the adjacent over hypotenuse, which is x over 1, and we times it. So the cosine of any angle, so we could call that theta, the cosine of any angle is x, is the x value of the coordinate. So what do we know about this coordinate? When we think about our unit circle, and we're putting a triangle in here, any triangle in here with an angle of theta, we know our coordinate is going to be cosine sine because the y value is cosine and the x value, did I say that backwards? The x value is cosine and the y value is sine. It goes in alphabetical order to help you remember. So you may want to write that, cosine, sine. So in our first evaluation, this is how we actually use this unit circle. What's the point of the unit circle? We're looking for 135 degrees. So we go to 135 degrees. And remember the pattern is cosine sine. And we're supposed to be looking for the sine of 135. So sine is your y value. So what is the sine at 135? 
root 2 over 2. You don't need a calculator at all. The cosine of 210. Well, remember, 210 is past 180. It's 30 degrees past 180. So that's a long way over and a short way down. Long way over, a short way down. We're looking for the cosine. And remember, it goes in order of cosine, sine. X is cosine. Y is sine. So it's a long way over, which means it's negative root 3 over 2. Okay, and here's the toughest one. We're going to do tangent of 60 degrees. Well, what do we know about tangent? Well, we know tangent of a theta, whatever the angle is, 30, 60, 90, doesn't matter, is always opposite over adjacent. The opposite we've identified as being a y value, and the adjacent is always the x value. So tangent is always y over x, otherwise known as sine over cosine. So the tangent of 60 is going to be, what is 60? 60 is a long way up there to get to 60, so it's short over and a long way up. So it's sine over cosine. It's root 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. Root 3 over 2 times the reciprocal. You can cross those off. And the tangent of 60 degrees is just root 3. Notice that that was the y value over the x value. You had to multiply by the reciprocal. And you can reduce to get root 3. What is sine of pi over 6? Or this is actually 11 pi over 6. Well, this is 1 pi over 6, and 2 pi over 6, and 3 pi over 6, and 4 pi over 6, and 5, and 6, and 7, and 8, and 9, and 10. This would be 11 pi over 6. You can count your way around. 11 pi over 6. We're looking for the sine. The sign is the y value. That's going to be negative a half. This is cosine of pi over 4. Well, pi over 4 we know is one of the 45s. That's in the first quadrant. So we know even without looking that this is root 2 over 2. It's the x value at 45 degrees. Now we're going to do tangent of 5 pi over 4. Well, this is 1 over 4. This would be 2 over 4. This would be 3 over 4. This would be 4 over 4. This one's 5 over 4. So we want to do the tangent of the y over the x. So negative root 2 over 2 divided by negative root 2 over 2. To do that, you have to multiply by the reciprocal. So that's negative 2 over root 2. And those are both going to cross off. And two negatives make a positive. So you're just going to get a value of 1. Tangent is going to be positive in the first and the third quadrant. It will always be negative in the second and fourth quadrant because one of the signs is always negative there. So what is the sign at pi? 
Don't look at your unit circle. Where is pi? You visually think pi is a circle and you think straight across because that's where pi is and the coordinate here is to the left and up so negative one zero is the coordinate so what is the y value at pi zero that's how you do these without having your sheets in front of you this is how you memorize this you understand how to determine it you don't just memorize it you understand how to make it so you have your unit circle at zero degrees you need to know that that is straight to the side so if it's straight to the side I know my coordinates going to be one comma zero so what is the cosine at zero degrees it's going to be one tangent so you have your unit circle of 2 pi that's going all the way around so all the way around puts me at a coordinate of 1 comma 0 tangent we know is going to be y over x and what do we get when we have 0 over 1 we get an answer of 0 so that's how you can do this without looking we could have drawn these pictures for every single one of these tangent at 270 270 is straight down what's the coordinate straight down 0 right and left negative 1 down we know that tangent is y over x what happens when we divide by zero we get undefined 